It's a Jimmer Thursday on BYU Sports Nation. This is my impersonation of that. <laughs> the, the no emotion, but every, everybody's feeling every emotion. So. Yes. <laughs> Scored 32 at Jersey's worth. Uh, welcome back to BYUSN. Alongside Jerem Jordan, I'm Spencer Linton. We are live in Studio B, and we now welcome in for the first of two segments today, the great Jimmer for Day. Long time no see, man. Long time no see. You Been, guys got me for two segments. Yes. 11 and a half yes. hours. My goodness. Working overtime. Working overtime. How do you yeah. feel about the versatility <laughs> of the set? Because last night you're doing the hey. pregame, but it's like a different place in it's, here. It's, it's unbelievable. I didn't realize it was only like a year old. Like I, it's, This is an incredible studio. Yeah, we I like feel it. like I could be in here a lot more often and enjoy it. So this is uh, watching the game last night on the big screen. That was fun. It's the way. It's great. It's we, great. Do, we don't really do that on this program. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we need to do that more. Right? Yes, yeah. yes. No, th that was, uh, it was elite. Elite. So it was, it's, it's been great. Okay, speaking of last night, how would you sum up your first official experience as a college basketball analyst? Yeah, yeah, it was it was good. It was it was fun. Let's put it this way. I enjoyed it. Had a great time. Obviously, Jerem led the whole thing, and we were kind of just uh, enjoying, uh, you know, speaking off of his questions. And uh, so I felt like it was pretty natural. I mean, I know the game of basketball and this team, and uh, was doing a DU game, so it felt like it was perfect yeah. timing for me you living in Denver, Denver yeah. for a little bit, you know. So had some tidbits, but I mean, it was it was a really fun experience. You know, I'm a hard crowd. I'll give myself a C. I, there's a lot of things I can do better. There's a lot of things I can do better, but it was uh, it was great for your very very first time doing this. As an analyst, you've done a gajillion yeah, interviews. Yeah, yeah. But like where you're the analyst, yeah. I thought it was really, really good. Well, thank you. I thought it was awesome. And it was super Appreciate fun. Appreciate it. Because sitting next to you and Ty, it's like, yeah. dude, we can't go wrong. Here. Let's <laughs> yeah, just have exactly. some fun. Yeah, we just have fun. Yeah. Trying to make fun of some people. Yes. Make fun of myself. You know, have a good time. I know I, I watched the Mannings. We talked about the Mannings yeah. and how good they are at doing the in-game stuff and just playing off each other and being self-deprecating, but also just being funny, enjoying it. That's what people like. Yes. So I try to, try to do the same and just have a good time with it. I do have an issue with you guys, though. Um, <laughs> you didn't tell me about blue pants. Yep, yep, yep. And you didn't tell me about gray suit either Listen, last hey, night. Come we, on! We didn't have to tell each other. No. <laughs> you know, we, we just, just knew. Absolutely just did it we on our own. Know. Obviously, we're not on the same wavelength, Jeremy. Like, uh, we, I thought we got, were because we go back to 07. But. We do, we do, but it uh, looks like it. we lost it. <laughs> we lost, lost it. We lost it in 16 or something, <laughs> 2016 maybe. <laughs> I don't know, somewhere in some, there. Some yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. And at the Nikos, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, yeah once the... I went to Europe, it was over. <laughs> Full clarity. Because I, I, I went skinny jeans, and it was over. <laughs> I know the question's going to come from our good friend John, by the way. He's like, oh. okay, you had the same gray suits on last night. Now you got the blue pants yeah. on. John's yeah. texting What's us the all deal? the time. About did, you, did you plan this? This was absolutely 100% unequivocally not planned. Well, that makes this, me this, feel better, though. The gray suit planned. and the blue pants, no, not planned. It was it was not planned, but we might start planning now just to have fun. Just to have fun yeah, with you. Yeah, exactly. It's fine. <laughs> Coming back to the Marriott Center is one thing. Coming back in a suit and being an analyst yeah. is different. How was last night versus your other visits? Different, right? So usually you're getting there. I mean, I, I come to a game usually once a year now with my kids. Um, so I come back and, you know, Brian Santiago's got the whole treatment. We're sitting there with the iPads. The kids don't even watch the game. They just are <laughs> locked in on, on the games. And, you know, we get the ice cream. We get the cougar tails. We have uh, we have a great time. You feel the atmosphere in the building, obviously. Get the cheers. And it's it's just a great experience. And this was a little bit different, right? You come here for for, for, for some work, you know, and you got to prepare. I was on the plane over here. You had notes. Yeah, I was, uh, right. Yeah. right notes and uh, looking at the Denver tape watching you know, them against Idaho and against Colorado State and watching these games you put in the work but I like it right like I like watching basketball it's fun for me to do I like analyzing players see what they do um, how are they you know what's their defensive scheme against these players and you know how does the score where do they get their shots all these different things I enjoy uh, that because then I can use it in my game if I'm playing or if I'm teaching or coaching someone I can help you know hey so this guy does this so it's it's fun for me it's natural and yeah I can see myself doing a lot more. All right, we always talk about the eye test. Now you've watched BYU several times this season yeah. and obviously very specifically last night. So yeah. as you observe this specific BYU team, what impresses you the most about the Cougars after a 9 and 1 start? Um the fact that they can spread the wealth so well, I mean, it's incredible that they're averaging over 20 assists, 20 assists per game. Like, that does not happen often in a, for a college team. For sure. So being able to pass that ball, so first it tells me that they like each other, 
Uh, they're unselfish. They do not care who's scoring the basketball. That's always really good, right? The second thing is that they're knocking shots down. They they have four or five guys that are knockdown shooters, right? They're getting the balls in the right places. And now, and and coach has gone to a, f a spread five off a five out offense to get these guys space so that when they're getting into the lane, someone's helping. They're kicking it. They're usually making that shot or it's an extra pass. Ollie's been huge being able to pass the ball and make a threat when you're going back door. If you don't have a threat to actually get the ball, then you can hug up on the guy and, and that offense doesn't work as well. So being have being able to have that passer at the top, kind of like a, a Jokic light, I like to call him, uh, being able to go out and do that is something that is really important for that offense. So I've been very, very impressed. It'll be interesting once they get into Big 12 play when they get down to really close games. Which one of those guys is going to take over? Because you're going to need a guy that's going to be like, I can, I'm going to get a bucket for you right now, and I don't need anybody's help. And that's what I'm going to look for as mm. they move forward. Is it Dallin Hall? Is it Dawson Baker? Is it Jackson, is it Robinson? Jackson Robinson? Who's yep. playing so well. We are talking about last five, 22 a game, 50% from three. Yep. Off the bench. Yep. At, what, at what point, and we discussed this in the postgame, but at yep. what point does BYU need to consider, if at all, starting yep. him? Yeah, I mean, his production is so good. Um, you know, I think at this point, like we talked about, you let it flow as of right now because things are working. Uh, he's comfortable coming off the bench. He knows exactly what he needs to do when he comes off the bench. He's there to score, right? So he's as soon as he gets an open look, he is shooting the ball. And sometimes as a starter, you ease into it a little bit. You see how the defense is playing you, right? You're like, all right, now they're switching. Oh, they know they're going over ball screens. So I take that first couple possessions to see what it is. He's watching that from the bench and like, all right, this is where I'm going to get my shots off. This is how I'm going to get my shots off. As soon as I have an open look, I'm shooting it. So he feels like somebody I know. 100%. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's absolutely. I love that about him. So, uh, so I will, so I love that. Um, but at a point in time, there may be a game where, you know, game or two where things slide, whatever happens during the Big 12, it's just, it's the, it's the Big 12. You're going to have some games that are difficult. It'll be interesting at that point to see, all right, now I need to switch up this starting lineup. Let's put in some more firepower. Let's get someone else off of the bench that can still bring in some firepower. So it'll be interesting to see. But right now, things are good. So let's keep it. As good as Jackson was last night, he only made eight threes. Yeah, only. Good. And didn't quite oh, hit yeah. your nine or Chase Fisher's <laughs> ten, so you're, yeah. you're safe for now. I'm safe for now. I mean, <laughs> with how many shoot threes that these guys shoot, we know that these are these numbers are going down eventually. That's just the way it works, right? So I'm happy where I'm at. I'm already, I mean, I'm already number two, so at this point, what's the difference, <laughs> if, I go, what's the difference if I go to three, four, five? You, you had know, five years and, of yeah, greatness. I mean, you can barely watch the Arizona tape. It's like grainy. You know what I mean? I, I just, it'll be lost ever. Uh, yeah, where's the ball? Yeah, yeah. I, wait a I didn't even have the channel. I didn't watch that game live. Yeah. I was watching Lord of the Rings, and I was like, Tim yeah. Red 49? Yeah. What happened? Yeah. yeah, Lord of the Rings, I love it. <laughs> it was awesome, man. <laughs> at, at what point is the rotation perhaps too big? Because yeah. Marcus Adams Jr. could play. Dawson Baker uh, is going to play soon. Foose is going to come back at some point. Yeah. You can't realistically play like 12 guys and have a flow, it feels yeah. like. No. Or maybe you can. No, I don't think so. Uh, being on a lot of different teams, uh, you know, I, I relate it to the Clippers the last couple of years. They've had so much depth. They got 12 guys that can actually play, and it's like only eight of them really is what you want to do. Once you get into a Big 12 play, you're only really looking for an eight-man rotation. The ninth and tenth guy may come in to, to sub for a few minutes, right? But that's basically it. Foul trouble situation. Exactly. Like you know, a little bit of a blow, whatever it is. But you want to get it down to that eight-man rotation. So Coach is trying to figure that out. He's got three, you know, four more games to be able to – figure that out especially with the new guys possibly coming in it's a perfect time to be able to all right this is this three games if I can get these guys acclimated I can see them in an actual game situation I can see them in practice for a couple of weeks and then at that point you know you you, you figure out your rotation and kind of go from there obviously it'll change as you go but you want to try to get it down to to eight and have those guys play the majority of the minutes I, I couldn't tell you who's not Gonna play much. Maybe at this point. I mean, Trey, like, and this, like you said, it's unfortunate. Trey's Trey, played well. He's playing way better than yeah. last year, but he's probably the odd man out if they had to do that today. And then I don't yeah. know who else. And he's so good defensively. I love Trey. Right? I mean, last night with Bruner, right? He came into the game and changed it immediately. Got a steal, tipped it off of his leg, created a turnover. You know, but you know, he, he obviously someone's got to be the odd man now. We're not sure exactly who that could be. 
it may be Trey, uh, maybe someone else that we're not even thinking of. That coach is like, hey, we need we need some length today. We need some scoring, whatever yeah. it is. Um, so we'll we'll see. But it's good to have options. You just need to make sure that you're you're communicating with the team. Hey, this is what I'm expecting, and bring the guys in and say this is what I'm expecting out of you. Your minutes may come down, but stay ready because at some point you never know what's going to happen. You need to continue yeah. to stay ready and buy in. As far as expectations go with BYU as they build toward the Big 12 Conference, and this is a moving target for sure because BYU yeah. has been so good unexpectedly yeah. compared to what we thought they originally were going to be, yeah. and that's a credit to Mark Pope and his staff and yeah. the guys, and they were tired of hearing that everybody says they, you know, they're going to be terrible. Yep. Um, that era is over. Yeah, yes. that, that has <laughs> been over. put to bed yeah. for sure. <laughs> but both Jeremy and I have kind of – we started out at six Big 12 wins. Now it's like maybe up to like – Eight, eight or nine, yeah. you know. Yeah. So in your mind, what would be a good Big 12 record in 18 games? Is it eight and ten? Is it nine and nine? Yeah, because it's I, so tough. Yeah, I think if, if you're around 500, I think that's very good for this first year, right? Because like, look at that schedule. I mean, the teams that you're playing, I, I mean, I talked about it last night. Your easiest game is going to be against West Virginia. <laughs> uh, you know, a team like that. So, at, West Virginia, at West Virginia, what like, a – yeah. No, that's, that's easy, right? Like, super easy win. So Gosh. you see that schedule, and it's just the way that it kind of works, um, the Big 12. So if you're somewhere around – hovering around 500 – those teams make it into the tournament, right? Like, yes. especially with the, the non-conference schedule that we've had going, if we did go in 12 and one, and then we did, uh, you know, a 500, we're in the tournament. It's not, Single not, not a question, two. not a question. So that's the luxury of being in a really good conference. But at the same time, you have to win half of your games and they're not easy. Gonna, they're not easy wins. You, you're going to be in close games a lot of the time. So we have to see, you know, BYU continue to play in these close games and win these close games, at least a few of them, right? And hopefully every once in a while you get a 10, 15-point win at the Marriott Center because it's rocking and the rock is going nuts and, yes. you know, we're having a good time. You'll have a few of those games, and then there'll be a few games where you're at rock chalk and uh, you get blown out. But you got to stay the course, right? Stay the course. That's what you're looking for. Get into that tournament. Under Mark Pope, you always 500 in single-digit games, by the way. Ooh. Yeah. They're way better when it's 10 plus. Okay. Yeah. They don't yeah. lose a ton by 10 plus. Yeah. They win way more. So that yeah. will be interesting. Yeah, for sure.